Hello, my name is Jonathan Bean. I'm a clinical application specialist with Hamilton Medical. This section explains the basics of the user interface and the ventilation cockpit. So let's start with the top right going clockwise. Here you can see the current mode in patient population and the basic ventilator settings. And there is the control window with all the controls with two windows for controls, basic and more and the patient information window where you can readjust the patient information. Next is the alarms window where you may adjust all the alarms. There's two sections, limits one and limit two. Limits two is where you'll find the entitled CO2 alarm and others and there's the buffer window. Below the alarms tab you'll see the battery charge indicator with separate indicators for battery one and battery two. Battery two is the hot swappable battery. Battery one is the fixed battery. And we can tell the ventilator is plugged into AC power because you see the frame around the AC power indicator here. If the ventilator becomes unplugged, you'll see a red X across the AC power indicator. And now this is the systems tab where you can find various ventilator information tidbits such as the serial number and the software version and install the options. In this window there's the tests and calibrations windows where you would do the pre-op check in, uh, or also set up the O2 cell or CO2 sensor for use. In the sensors tab you'll find the controls for turning on and off each sensor such as the CO2 sensor. And then next you'll find the settings tab where you'll find the loudness adjustment. The loudness adjusts from 1 to 10 with 10 being the loudest, 1 being the most quiet. And wherever you decide to set it, you can test the loudness by pressing test. Below that is the day and night adjustment. So this is where you can adjust the screen brightness and the alarm lamp brightness for daytime and nighttime settings. Or you can set the screen to adjust automatically in relation to ambient light. Next tab down is where you may adjust the date and time. And we can close that window by touching system again. Next tab over is called events. This is the logbook, so to speak of recent ventilator events including setting changes and alarm messages. Next tab over is the tools tab where you can select between high pressure oxygen and low pressure oxygen. You do have to be in standby to switch to low pressure oxygen and the maximum flow for low pressure oxygen will be 15 liters per minute. You can also choose to set the alarm limits for oxygen manually. In this window also is the configuration tab. By inputting a code you'll be able to change options on the ventilator. Next tab over is the monitoring window where you'll see all the monitored values available on the T1. There's three different sections with different monitored values and there's a separate tab for the CO2 information and there would be a separate tab for SpO2 also if that were activated. And here on the left side of the screen you'll see the four main monitored parameters. These are configurable. Right now we have displayed peak pressure, expiratory minute volume, exhaled tidal volume, and total frequency. This section is the message bar where you'll see alarm messages and technical messages. And then there's the modes tab where you'll find all the different modes available. In the middle part of the screen you'll see the graphics. The top graphic right now is the pressure waveform which is fixed in place. You can't change that. But on the pressure waveform you'll see the red line across the top which is indicative of the high pressure alarm setting. And the blue line below is indicating the pressure limit setting. The bottom window is a window that you can adjust. Uh, right now we're displaying the dynamic lung, which is a graphic representation of the patient's lung mechanics, including 
inspiratory resistance and static compliance, patient triggering, entitled CO2, and the patient information. This monitoring panel can be changed to display different graphics. So let's touch the panel in the center and we'll display the vent status panel, for example. The vent status panel displays six different monitoring parameters, each parameter with their defined upper and lower limits. As the indicators reach the weaning parameter limits, a small timer appears telling us how long that parameter has been within weaning limits. When all timers appear, a large timer appears here and the panel is framed in green. We can also change to display different waveforms. So we'll open up the graphic window again and on the right side, waveforms. Let's display a flow waveform, for example. We can also freeze each waveform. That's the button in the upper right. That freezes the waveform and brings up a cursor. Where the cursor is pointing, the value is displayed in the upper left-hand corner, and the time on the time scaler is on the right-hand corner. To unfreeze the waveform, touch the screen on the button again. We can also change the time scale of each waveform. Select the drop-down menu, select the time frame you'd like to see, press the button. We can also display loops. Select loops from the graphic window. You have your choice of several loops. Let's display a pressure volume loop. Each loop can be uh, stopped to display a reference loop for comparison. To get rid of the reference loop, just tap the button again. The ventilator can also display trends. The ventilator can display a trend of all monitoring values up to 72 hours. Simply select the time span you'd like to see, reach over to the drop down menu, select the monitor value you'd like to trend, and then confirm, and the trend is displayed. You can also examine the trend by freezing the waveform, which brings up the cursor. Turn the cursor back. Where the cursor is pointing, the value is displayed in the upper left-hand corner. The time of that monitor value is in the right-hand corner. And you also have the reverse time scaler. God. And now we'll just go back to the dynamic long graphic.